How the University of Kentucky has responded after police say they arrested a UK football player on drug charges during a traffic stop. An alleged case of child neglect leads to a random act of kindness at this McDonald's restaurant. It's being recognized by Danville police. Neighborhood cut throughs in Lexington may help drivers, but why people who live along the route say they're also dangerous. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening to you. It started when police say they pulled him over for speeding, but what they say they found in a UK football player's car landed him in jail. And now 21 year old defensive end Jason Hatcher has been kicked off the team. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office said he had about a pound of marijuana with him. Victor Puente is tracking the investigation in our top story at 6. This isn't the first time Jason Hatcher has been charged in connection to marijuana, but this latest charge saw him dismissed from UK's football team. The 21 year old was arrested just before 1 a.m. Monday. He was driving on Interstate 64. The Franklin County Sheriff says he was speeding and deputies smelled marijuana in the car. That deputy went back to his cruiser to get his gloves for a search. When he came back up, there were some seeds and stems and stuff on his crotch area. And uh, when he got him out, he had stuck a quarter pound of marijuana down his pants. There was three quarters of a pound of marijuana found on the passenger side floorboard of the vehicle. They arrested Hatcher and charged him with trafficking in marijuana, tampering with physical evidence, possession of drug paraphernalia, and speeding. Melton says Hatcher told them that pot wasn't his. He made a statement that he was picking it up for somebody else. According to the Courier Journal, Hatcher was cited for alleged marijuana possession in Louisville in 2014. That charge was dismissed after he completed marijuana education courses. Melton says any efforts to hide drugs this morning most likely wouldn't have worked. I would say if you got a pound of pot in your car, it's going to smell. Just before noon, the University of Kentucky released this statement in regards to the junior defensive end. Quote, Jason Hatcher, a defensive end and linebacker on the University of Kentucky football team, has been dismissed for violation of team rules Coach Mark Stoops has announced. UK has no additional comment. Hatcher entered a not guilty plea this morning in Franklin District Court. He's due back in court in March. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. And last August, Hatcher was suspended for UK's first two games of the season for violating team rules. Tonight, a Boyle County woman faces charges after police say she got drunk and forced her young granddaughter to stay outside. Police say the girl was hungry when they found her outside Lisa Ball's home. And as Phil Pendleton tells us, that led to an act of kindness at a nearby restaurant. The story begins just before 8 Sunday morning on Crescent Drive in Danville, where police say 51 year old Lisa Ball had ordered her nine year old granddaughter outside wearing a t shirt and shorts while Ball stayed inside drunk. Police arrested the grandmother and took the little girl to McDonald's for breakfast. Like, there's so much negativity in the world. Where Chastity Young was behind the counter. And then I, I noticed that, you know, he was buying her breakfast and, um, he looked at me and he said, well, she hadn't eaten in a while. So Young so, said the meal was on them. I thought, what can I do to make her day a little bit better? And before they left the store, Young gave her a Happy Meal toy, just a small My Little Pony. But to her, it probably meant the world. Girl's grandmother was arrested and taken to jail where she's facing charges of alcohol intoxication and endangering the welfare of a minor. In fact, her arrest citation states that she just cannot handle caring for the granddaughter anymore. I at him, I Young of... says she's just glad she was there to provide a little bit of light on an otherwise dark day. So after I gave her the toy, she was like, I'm going to brush this pony's hair all day. <laughs> she was happy. She was happy. In fact, Danville police are also recognizing Young's actions, stating on their Facebook page that it is random acts of kindness like oh, this one that reminds us that this community has plenty of caring people. In Boyle County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Court records show Ball has been arrested before on charges of alcohol intoxication and possessing cocaine and marijuana. The FBI isn't saying much about why agents searched a home in Lexington today. Agents showed up at the home on Heartland Parkside Drive off Kennesaw Drive this morning. The FBI also removed some boxes from the home and questioned the people who live there, but so far the FBI has not arrested anyone. The agency did say that no one living nearby was ever in any danger. 
They're pretty popular with many drivers who are trying to save a few minutes, but many people who live along neighborhood cut-throughs in Lexington say that comes at a cost for them. They say drivers are speeding on these streets, and they're asking police and city leaders for help. We wanted to see for ourselves. Miranda Combs has this WKYT investigation. Make the motion that we accept this. It, it doesn't cut off the debate or no, anything. Sure. Yeah, it does. In a place of motions and seconds. Well, now this is your motion to to pass it. That's what that's what we're voting on. But chair, they can I ask would, those I, questions. I would encourage the council to, to proceed. I agree. If you'd like to proceed, a minimum of eight votes from the council is paper, scissors, and rock. You're done. Of questions and answers. I still have concerns about the whole petition process. Now, if it changed, I'd like to know when it changed. There was one topic on this Tuesday that put the brakes on change, at least for now. Their recommendation comes to us. Let's pass it or not pass it. Then let's amend it or make motions to correct it. A perfect example of the reason for the disagreement indoors is what's going on right here. This is High Crest Drive. The speed limit is 25. Driveways give way to homes every few feet. It's near a Lexington Elementary School. This is one of the roads Lexington traffic engineering officials say they get a lot of calls about, and it didn't take long to see why. Cars going 30, 35, 36. So we've been here for 30 minutes, and in that time we've seen 31 cars pass by us. Not a single one was going the speed limit. It's a huge problem, and the perception of the public is that it's a huge problem. Sergeant Ron Keaton says neighborhood cut-throughs are on their radar. Travel to the North Limestone Corridor, where many, like Drew Shackelford, prefer a bike over a car. About a month ago, while cycling during rush hour... She hit me with her car. Uh, I got knocked off of my bike. She was okay and went on home. Her home sits on a cut through street for many drivers just off North Limestone. Last summer, neighborhood kids painted these signs. She says it helped for a while, but not much anymore. People that use it as a cut through, as opposed to people who live on the street, tend to go very fast down the road and it's very dangerous. She says her neighbors are working on approaching the neighborhood traffic management program. Members of the council have other commentary on this issue. Which brings us back here. The traffic engineering, the police, the council person all see that this is a dangerous situation. That program is the one being discussed, where neighbors can call and voice concerns about speeders in their neighborhood and even petition for changes to the streetscape if needed. It has been in existence for some time in the city, but it's getting some upgrades that need council approval, since the problem of neighborhood cut throughs is one that isn't going away. I'm looking for a second, or we're moving on. Second. If you go to neighborhood meetings, uh, speeding and traffic seems to be the huge, uh, the number one complaint of most of them. In 2014, cut through routes with the most speeding complaints were Clay's Mill Road, Beaumont Center, Arrowhead, and in 2015, it was Valley Road, Polo Club, and Blairmore. As the city grows, more streets are going to be more compliance. Is that everybody? Are we all in? 4-4 four, four tie fails, so we're going to keep it in committee. So if you have a concern about speeders on your street, you can call 311 and make a complaint. If the neighborhood traffic management program comes out and can't find any safety or maintenance problems, that neighbor will have to get a petition for officials to come out and look again. The most popular solution for speeders is usually a multi-way stop. Now, the program was in committee for housekeeping. One of the big issues was in reference to the petitions should tenants get a vote or just the property owner. So that's what they were discussing. Yeah. I'm pretty impressed. You went out the streets with a lot of complaints and actually showed how fast some people seem to be going. And you can see why. I would like to say, though, I'm not trained to use that radar gun. <laughs> <laughs> but you could definitely tell that people were going over the speed limit in a lot of those areas. Yeah. All right, Miranda, Thanks. thank mm -hmm. you. We have had some calm and some cool weather across the bluegrass today, but get ready. A storm system is heading our way with changes later this week. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey joins us now early with a look at that forecast. Yeah, you want it? Chances are we've got it coming um, uh, up over the next couple of days, especially Wednesday into Thursday. A little bit of everything to come from the skies during that time. Right now, it's the calm before the big storm. Not too bad out there. Typical mid and upper 40s across most of central and eastern Kentucky. Now 46 Lexington. A little cooler here into London. Jackson 44, 43 respectively. We've had more clouds across southern Kentucky than what we've had in the north where we actually had a little sun. 
Yeah, not so much out there right now. A lot of clouds over top of Lexington, 46 degrees. Feels a little colder, courtesy of a northeasterly wind coming at us at 12 miles per hour. Defender Radar Network, a ton of clouds, a little bit of light rain that may graze parts of southern Kentucky. That's coming out of a system that is right on top of Mississippi now. Most of that juice, though, is across the southern parts of the Appalachian Mountain Storm System. We're going to keep an eye on coming out of New Mexico and into Texas. That bad boy will be right on top of Kentucky by Wednesday, and that will bring heavy rain, thunderstorms, high winds, major temperature crash, and oh, by the way, some snow that will follow all of that up. The hour by hour forecast when I come back is awfully, awfully interesting. Chris, thank you. The city of Lexington may be getting closer to filling in the pit in the middle of downtown Lexington. A letter sent by a lawyer for the city of Lexington sets a deadline for work on the long delayed center point development. Jennifer Plumbo is at the live desk with details. Jennifer? Sam, attorney Mason Miller sent this letter dated February 19th to Maxim Crane Works in Pennsylvania, the company that owns the two cranes on the Center Point site. The letter warns the crane company that if work on the three level underground parking garage doesn't resume by March 30th, LFUCG intends to exercise its right to complete the restoration work, fill the site, and return the property to its pre excavation condition. This letter comes nearly two weeks after the latest developers decided to back out. UK law student Matt Collins had teamed up with Bridgeton Holding Properties from New York to take over the $166 million project. Mason Miller sent a letter to the council on February 11th outlining the agreement with developers through a timeline of the plagued project that started in 2008. It included all of the extensions given to the web company. Miller also explained in that letter that if the garage was not finished by March 30th or the property restored to its pre-construction condition, the city has the right to fill in the hole itself. It also said the city can seek up to $4.4 million in reimbursement and foreclose on the property if they don't get reimbursed. At the Live Desk, Jennifer Palumbo, WKYT. And we did call the Crane Company for a comment, but no one has returned our call. University of Kentucky leaders are planning a mumps vaccination clinic after an outbreak of mumps on campus. UK health leaders say at least three students tested positive for mumps, but a dozen others also reported having a swollen jaw. Test results for those students are still pending. UK health leaders say the three students with mumps had been vaccinated. They say the incubation period for mumps is 25 days, so there could be other cases out there. A date for the vaccination clinic has not yet been announced. They're hoping more than a year of renovations will pay off. Business owners near a stretch of North Upper Street in downtown Lexington had an unofficial ribbon cutting for the street this morning. North Upper between West Short and West Main recently reopened. It had been closed for renovations and as part of the construction at the new 21C Museum Hotel.